Today we're talking about how to play against every leader in the game. It's great to have a game plan for your own deck and how you're going to play, but you really become a better player when you sit down across an opponent and you have an idea of what their game plan is, and you can both play your game plan and try to disrupt your opponent at the same time. So I want to start with Han. Han is probably one of the easier heroes in the game to disrupt. Uh, he's also one of my favorites to play. I don't know what that says about me. Um, but Han is looking for a very specific point in the game to have a massive, massive power surge. Uh, he can use his ability early in the game to put cards from his hand into play as a resource. Um, if he does that too many times, he's really going to get low on cards, and it becomes a little bit crippling. So he may or may not do that, but certainly uh, the turn where he resources to five, he has a potential to, to just go wild because he can use his ability to exhaust, put a resource into play. Now he's at six resources, so he can flip. Then he can attack, and on attack, he can put another resource into play. Now he's at seven. And that lets you play some really powerful cards like Mace Windu, Luke Skywalker, Ewing Reinforcements. It's, uh, it's definitely, definitely strong. So how can you combat that? There are a couple ways. I think one of the best ways is probably just no good to me dead. This card is amazing against pretty much anything. Uh, all leaders uh, succumb to it. But Han... Uh, is even worse when when matched up against no good to me dead because it exhausts him for two rounds right so he deploys you play this he doesn't get his seventh resource so he can't play that luke or that uh, mace windu that he was hoping to play and not only that but he's got to defeat his sixth resource so this basically puts him back two turns in one card uh, it's it's just crazy. Another good way to combat Han is with some hand disruption, right? When he's putting cards from his hand into play as resources, he's burning through cards. And so, you know, when he deploys, if you can play a force throw and make him discard that last card in his hand, uh, he's got nothing to do anymore. And so that's that's really quite good against Han. Palpatine is another one that is trying to get to a specific moment in the game. He's trying to get to eight resources, flip, and steal your unit. So an easy way to beat him is just beat him before he gets to eight resources, right? Uh, but let's focus for just a minute on his leader side. His ability is to spend a resource, exhaust, and defeat a friendly unit to deal a damage to unit and draw a card. That's a pretty costly ability. He has to have resources and he has to have friendly units that he's willing to defeat. So in the early game, just denying him those friendly units can be quite powerful. Uh, if he's got a unit with one or two health left, don't let it sit around uh, to let him you know, potentially sacrifice them and, and draw more cards and see more options. Just kill it. And then when you know he's about to flip, there's a few uh, strategies you can use to, to try to deny him those powerful uh, units. Uh, the first thing is he can't take control of your leader, right? So if you've only got your leader, it doesn't matter if, if your leader's damaged, uh, he can't take control of it. So it might be tempting to, to not even flip. Another one is actually some healing. I think in this game, uh, there's not a lot of unit healing that's very popular. But it works pretty well against Palpatine, right? He gets to turn 8. You don't have any damaged units. He uses his ability. It sacrifices a guy because, you know, you weren't able to kill all those guys. And puts a damage on your big Luke Skywalker or your Obi-Wan. Well, you just play Repair. And now his, uh, you know, huge swinging ability does nothing. So that's, that's a, a kind of a fun strategy. The next three units, or three leaders I want to talk about are Darth Vader, Chewbacca, and Turret. And I lump these together because in my mind, 
they're basically just giant uh, units. Uh, their their leader abilities are okay. Uh, you know, Vader can deal some damage to units and bases. Chewie can turn little guys into sentinels. Turret gives a unit plus two health for the phase. But what these guys are probably trying to do is just get to the point where they flip their leader and then have their leader uh, do massive amounts of damage. Chewie probably takes that to the extreme. He's a 2-9 Sentinel with Grit, right? So you have to attack him, and as you attack him, he gets even stronger. So if you hit him for 6 damage, he's going to hit you back for 8, right? So a couple ways to deal with Chewie. You, you want to basically kill him in one shot or as close to one shot as you can, right? Don't hit him for five and then hit him for two and then hit him for two more. Uh, you want to hit him for one or two if you need to and then hit him for seven. Uh, the other thing you can do with Chewie is just exhaust him. Uh, if, if you can exhaust him so you can't crack back at your base for those massive numbers, uh, that'll work. Vader's another one. You've got to get rid of Vader. On attack, he's dealing two damage to uh, a unit every time he swings, and he swings for five. Uh, so when I'm playing Vader, I'm, I'm making a plan for how can I burn this guy down uh, before he just chews through my whole board. And Chirrut is kind of the same way. Uh, Chirrut doesn't hit as hard, but he deploys way earlier. Chewie and Vader both deploy at seven. Chirrut deploys at five. And if you're up against a Truett, your opponent is probably planning on throwing him some upgrades, like some lightsabers or entrenched or something like that, and turning him into a massive, massive unit. So you've got to have a plan for Truett. Now, there are a couple leaders that are super susceptible to take down, and Truett is one of those. Uh, if you're up against Truett, I, I would not resource to take down. I would hold that uh, because as soon as he deploys, you just take down him. And uh, all those lightsabers in your opponent's hands uh, won't be helping them out very much. He can't be defeated in the action phase by having no remaining hit points. But takedown doesn't care about hit points. It, it just defeats you. I also uh, have Chirrut kind of next to Tarkin and Hera. Because all three of these can be a little susceptible to upgrade hate. Right? So Tarkin and Hera are both giving out experience tokens, and Charette's trying to grab those lightsabers. And so uh, there's there's some things that you can take advantage of, right? I've, I've seen Tarkin turn a Death Star Stormtrooper into a massive unit by giving it nine uh, experience tokens. So something like power failure uh, can be game-changing in an instant like, like that. Uh, when it comes to these two leaders, though, one of the general strategies I have is just to take out their targets before they can even buff them, right? So Hera can only give experience to unique units. Harkin can give it to Imperials. If you have an opportunity to kill a new unit now that you won't be able to kill if it gets one more health, just swing into it now. Especially since Tarkin is in green, you know, the color of Overwhelming Barrage, uh, you want to prevent them from getting a massive uh, unit on board. Next up, we have Leia, Sabine, and IG-88. In my mind, all three of these leaders are basically just trying to burst down your base. They're trying to go super, super fast. And so the counter for that is destroy units as soon as they hit the field. Uh, ambush is phenomenal against all three of these decks especially IG-88, right? His, his ability gives his units extra power if he has more units than you. So if you ever have an opportunity to attack something where you'll defeat their unit and your unit won't be defeated, you've, you've basically got to be taking advantage of that. And then two out of the three of these, right, IG-88 and Sabine, are still vulnerable to take down. Uh, so you want to be thinking about that. Next up is Thrawn, and Thrawn, I think, suffers just on the initiative front, right? If he gets to go first, he can 
probably exhaust your biggest thing on the field, right? Either with his leader ability or when he flips with his own attack ability. And if not with something those, he probably has something yellow in his deck that exhausts your stuff. And so if you're willing to just grab the initiative and not swing with, you know, a, a unit that costs one or two, you know, leave a damage or two out there, you'll get your swing in with your most important uh, units. So that's, that's a good way to fight against Thrawn. The Grand Inquisitor is an interesting one. He's dealing damage to his own units to ready them. A few keys to, to his abilities. He can only do this to friendly units that have three or less power. So uh, a lot of common targets in his deck are going to have three or less power, but they're going to be able to be boosted, right? So things like Fifth Brother, or they're going to have extra abilities uh, like Seventh Sister. And so when you see those specific units uh, that get powered up uh, when they have damage on them, or, you know, Fifth Brother gets extra raid for damage, uh, you might want to think about just attacking them uh, and, and uh, stopping them. Uh, for example, you know, Rugged Survivors has three power, and so Grand Inquisitor's ability works on Rugged Survivors once, right? Once, once it's hit it, uh, now he's uh, a five, or if, if he's using his leader side, now he's a four power, so he's not a target again. But you can just do that, right? So normally you don't want to damage units with grit, kind of like Chewbacca. You just want to burst them down all in one hit. But if you don't have the opportunity to, you can just deal a damage to the rugged survivors, and now Grand Inquisitor can't ready it. Uh, so you, you uh, can kind of control him a little bit that way. Next, we have Jin and Luke. And for these two... Both of them are trying to create value by winning the trade, right? So Jin, when her uh, unit is attacking yours, she can exhaust to give them minus one power. Luke can exhaust to give units shields. And that can be a pretty powerful effect. Uh, if you can you know, destroy your opponent's unit and not lose your own unit, you're gaining some advantage there. For Jin... Uh, her ability doesn't help at all on defense. So if you have units with similar stats and her unit would kill yours uh, if attacking and they would kill each other uh, if if you're attacking, you, you just need to uh, go ahead and, and trade units before she can get that value out of giving you that minus one power. And then for Luke, it's important to keep in mind that, that on his leader side, he can only give shield tokens to heroism units that he's played this phase. So it is a little restrictive that way. So right when he plays a unit, you have a chance to respond and kill that unit before it gets the shield. Uh, he can't do it to units that have been played in, in previous phases. So that's, that's a good way uh, to try to combat him. Next up, we have Aiden and Krennic, uh, two of my favorite heroes to play. Uh, both of these heroes, in my mind, are trying to make it to the long game. They're uh, healing their bases with their abilities. Aiden specifically, again, is uh, prime fodder for takedown. Any shielded uh, unit with five health or less is, is great for takedown. Wolf is another phenomenal counter to Aiden. He's, he's kind of niche, but he does a lot of work in that matchup. I think with both of these leaders, uh, my strategy is, is just get them off the board. Uh, unless you're in a situation where you can burn down that base, you know, even though Krennic is restoring to or Aiden is, is healing a bunch, uh, in the long run, you'll lose uh, if you don't get them off the board. And they don't hit that hard. You just need to find a way to ping Aiden's shield uh, or you know swing into it with a little unit. Krennic only hits for two. 
So it might slow you down a little bit, uh, but just take them out. And I saved Boba and Cassian for a last because, to be honest, I don't know that I have great counters uh, for these two in mind. You know, there is a, uh, a great, you know, leader killer, the Steadfast Battalion with ECL can knock both of these guys out, right? It can hit for seven. Um, but these two, I think, have less of a defined plan. They have a lot more options uh, just because, you know, Boba Fett deploys early and is so strong. And Cassian's abilities let him draw cards. So he's, he's naturally going to build a deck that's more toolboxy and has more options. So I think with these two, you kind of have to plan on the fly. You have to know a little bit about what your deck is trying to do versus some of these others where there's a really specific uh, point in time or a specific strategy that you can employ. 